previously on Friday Night Titans. Boy, man, I gotta tell you, I am so happy to be a Merc. It is such a new outlook on life. Thanks, man. I, I, that means the world. We really, we want to be like the happy playhouse of the Schmoda. I want to be the sun and the Teletubbies smiling down yes. at all my Schmoes. Yes, man, you are the sun. Dude, I woke up this morning, the birds were chirping at me. Dude, that makes me so happy. That is exactly the vibe we want. John Hammond. Five. And your winner, Brandon <laughs> the Hornet! <laughs> We need something different. What do we need? It's pretty simple. Change. Uh, look. <laughs> it's despicable. And poor here. Jeff has never competed, but no, maybe never been on it's camera. Okay, Jeff, it's okay, Jeff. It's okay. You did really well. My partner Jeff did a uh, great job today. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, he was just Let's a terrific seat. player, and you may know. Him wait, another wait a minute! Oh. Wait a minute! Oh. Come on, <laughs> danger zone. Danger Zone, such a disappointment. Oh, we thought they'd play better. They should break up. Every Harloff said, oh, they should break. Oh, super team. Yeah, we are a super team. Every tough team, they threw us at them. We still have a winning record. And you people have the gall to believe we're just gonna break up? Wait, so Danger Zone is not breaking up? Are you slow? Did you just see what happened? I set this deal up. And you're gonna betray me? From Mulligan? <laughs> oh, he's legit mad. Dan, I would expect it from a louse like baby. Hey, they're not worth it, man. But you, it's Dan. It's not worth it. They're not we worth built it. something with Danger Zone, man. They're not worth it, man. They're not worth it. Mega City won. The winner of the match and new <laughs> Anna Geekdom Schmona champion of the world, <laughs> Kevin. We did it. The we did it. Special we did it! We did it, man. We did what we said we were gonna do. We're back. The dungeon's back. We're on top. The smash is back. I couldn't. I'm I told telling. you. I told you I would bring the belt right back where it belongs to the dungeon. Whoa. Bravo. Whoa. Bravo. You think you're gonna come in here and piss on the dungeon celebration? You call yourselves a den? Listen. You're more like a dirty hamster cage. Listen, don't let them do that. Don't let them play these heads games. We know that they're trash. Don't let them stand on our moment. This is our moment. We don't want to uh, interrupt your moment, as you said, you know. Uh, really, truly, enjoy your moment. You know why? Because moments are very fleeting. Look, you figured it out. What What is is. And you got yourself a number one contender match. That's fair. You're, so, so what? I want my shot, Christian. That's, that's Danger just, Zone. Yeah. Danger Zone deserves a shot. Dan's excited about it. Yeah. We've been doing our thing, and, and I think it's time you make good on this deal. I got a team for you if you want it. I'll get it to you quick. Yeah, sure. 100%. Okay, you got King Arthur. That sounds... Sounds good? Sounds good. Okay, then you got King Arthur. Are you speaking for Dan? I absolutely 100% am speaking for Dan. Bro. You got the match. Now leave me alone. I'm busy. Hey, Bibbs, can I ask you a serious question? Yes, you can, Brandon. Would you consider this to be art? Well, Brandon, you came to the right place. You see, art is subjective. All that really matters is that you had something you wanted to say with this piece, and looking at it now, I think we can all agree that it says a lot about your character. Awesome, right on, man. Buzz, buzz. Growl, growl. Buzz, buzz. Growl, growl. Where did you come up with that great catchphrase, by the uh, way? Well, I was growling, and I was growling, and I was like, hey, everybody should hear about this. <sighs> Is that the sixth stench of desperation, or is it in fact, it is, the quirky mercs? It's both. Yeah. <sighs> Look, I don't know what you guys are doing, huffing paint or whatever this is. Mm. I've only come to speak on behalf of the latest and greatest inner geekdom sensation, the one and the only, my good sweet Brother Lomas. Hi. Brother Hannah, when you were the hit man, you had purpose. You had meaning, but you have let these swine, these false prophets, lead you astray with their kitty cat poster wisdom and fake positivity. I am going to give you one chance, Brother Hannah, to come back to the light. Tonight, this one opportunity to reject the lies of the quirky mercs and come and learn from my wisdom. Do you accept, Brother Hannah? No, I, I love the mercs. Then tonight, I will see you in the ring, and I will punish you for your sins! I mean, that sounds like fun. Yay! Let's Growl, growl!
growl. Buzz buzz. Growl growl. Buzz buzz. Growl, growl. Enough. Buzz buzz. With this disgusting catchphrase. Switch it up. Try something different. It's never gonna stick. Buzz buzz. Growl growl. Buzz buzz. Oh growl growl. Buzz buzz. Growl growl. Let's, let's buzz, be gone, brother. Growl, growl. I'm losing buzz, brain cells growl, by this. Buzz buzz. Growl growl. Buzz buzz. buzz. Growl, growl. Who told him about the cat posters? Was that you? Because we don't. We're not supposed to talk about that. Come on, come on, all to show the lifetime. The price of admission is non-existent. We got one hell of a lot out tonight, folks. We're taking names and putting to shame everyone that dares to step in our way. Tonight is the night. We're aching for a fight. Hard and ready to take you down. Now there's no escape. You're in the way. Put up or shut up. Let's go. This is Friday Night Titans. His highness has been on hold for 15 seconds, 16 seconds, 17 seconds. This is a royal offense, sir. Voicemail again. Yes. This is the 20th time I've tried to call Gucci. Why, why are you surprised? He is a peon, okay? I mean, we do know. not need to uh, sink ourselves to his level anymore, okay? We proved the point. We pretended that we were, you know, one with the people, but let's acknowledge the fact mm -hmm. that you are royalty. We are operating at a higher plane. We right. do not need a manager, okay? I mean, he did get us to spectacular. We played no, we for didn't. the belts. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. We played for the belts because we got ourselves to spectacular, okay? He rode the coattails. And he's not even a manager. He's a royal advisor, at best. And the key, the, I'd say like 90% of the job of being a royal advisor is showing up and giving advice, which he doesn't even do anymore. Right. I got caught up in the theatrics. He really didn't do that much Absolutely for us. nothing. He yeah. did some ranting, some monologuing, some conf yeah. he, he confused us more than he even confused our opponents, okay? Yeah. So let's just, let's do this. Let's operate as a sovereign nation. I like the sound of that. Yeah. And you know what? We can beat Danger Zone yes. without him. Yes, but that, that was never the concern. Right. Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Let's go. After you, sir. After you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Friday Night Titans. It's the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. That is Andrew Guy. I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. I majored in communications, and I will now relay the news to you that our headlining match tonight is King Arthur taking on Danger Zone. The winner goes on to play the current reigning team champions of the Schmodown, Shazam. Andrew, what we're talking about right now is this undercard, which turns out to be a pretty impressive matchup between two inner geekdom hopefuls looking for a belt. Yeah, Brother Lomas, who yeah. made quite an entry in his first foray in inner geekdom. He scored a knockout, but he's going up against the Hornet. Not the Hitman, the Hornet, Brandon Hanna, who's turned over a new leaf. Personally, he seems like a nice guy to everyone now, but he also got back to 500. He's currently 5-5 five and five in his inner geekdom record and a guy who once had his sight sets on getting a belt now looking to start to make some progress. He can take another huge step tonight by defeating Lomas. 100%. I mean, Brother Lomas is one of those guys. He came into the league very recently, obviously, whereas Brandon Hanna has been here for a while, but a lot of people loving what Lomas is doing, whether it's on stage or just on the mic. Brandon Hanna, he's gone through a couple faction changes, a couple character changes, a couple name changes, but here he is. Like you said, 5-5. Five and five. He's dead even, back at zero. Why not start building that leg Legacy right now, right here tonight on Friday Night Titans. Name changes, faction changes. I thought you were going underwear changes next. The I guy has did. been through a personal rigmarole, but look, he knows a lot about the inner geekdom, and so you think experience maybe outweighs the rookie factor of Lomas, but I, you and I, I called the match alongside Rachel Cushing. You saw it. Lomas did not look phased. He looked like he'd been in inner geekdom for about as long as the Pope has been Catholic. <laughs> Which is a long time, I hear. And what about that is that, you know, Lomas, he was able to stick 
to it, knowing that game was kind of all over the place. But really what it was for him was he was playing against himself. That's what you have to do in inner geekdom. You can never really pay too much attention to what your opponent is doing because when you get higher and higher up in the rankings, they're not going to miss. So who are you playing against? It's yourself. That's really what you got to think about. And today, I have a feeling we're going to see a very, very closely, hotly contested match. It's like you and I out on the golf course, right? We're just playing against ourselves it's fun. and uh, our horrible tempers. So now let's turn it over to the much more mild-mannered Ken Knapsack, the pit boss, until he gets in front of a microphone when he can run a little spicy. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our spicy friends around the world, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmoda! Yeah! This match is scheduled for three rounds to a finish in the Inner Geekdom Division. Introducing first, with a record of one win and zero defeats and one KO, accompanied to the arena by the Razor Rick Raddis. This is Brother Lomas. Oh, there's Brother Lomas greeted by Booze, which again, wow. I, I think are more about the Rager Rick Raddus right. than about Lomas. But look, they, they seem to be the uh, best of pals right now. And interesting to note that we just saw pre-show that it's going to be William Bibiani, the Beast, is going to be walking out with Brandon, the Hornet Hannah, and managing him. How are Bibiani and Raddus going to control them? Uh, it's a really interesting thing. It's two completely different personalities, but you know that Bibbs <laughs> loves to put on a show. And so <laughs> So does Rick the Rager Raddus. So I'm just going to sit back, have a good time, and be happy that I'm not competing against, well, Bibiani. It's inner geekdom. <laughs> I'm just glad I can pronounce most of these things correctly. Ken, back to you for some more pronunciation lessons. And his opponent, with a record of five wins and five defeats, representing the Quirky Marks, and accompanied to the arena by his faction mate, William the Beast Bibiani. This is Brandon, the Hornet Hanna! Tapping that box out, look at that. I, that was a great throwback to a bygone era of video game. I just want gold points. God, man, I used to love racking those up. Oh, of course. It hasn't you, really helped me in my adult life as much as I thought back as a youth. Yeah, but, uh, there's a lot of things like that from our childhood. And you can see here Brandon, the Hornet, Hannah, nothing but smiles there. Bibbs talking to him. And on the other side of it, you can see Lomas and Raddus just dialed in, ready to go. That's right. And, and, and Bibbs reminding who is on the opposite side from the Hornet that Bibbs has some championship acumen there around his shoulder yeah, as a know. team champion and so it is Brandon Hanna and it is Brother Lomas and they are set at the desk ready to go here are the rules of round number one you may not hit bricks for gold coins during the actual match mm. you will hear 10 questions in round number one from 10 different corners of inner geekdom schmodown goodness each question is worth a point keep in mind you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer you each have three repeats that you can use at any point throughout the three round match if you need us to repeat a question. Brother Lomas, you made quite an impression in your first Inner Geekdom match, and now you put your undefeated record on the line against the Hornet. Are you ready to go? This young man claims to want to be good, but has taken on the mark of the beast. I am going to show him what holiness is today. Uh, you seem pretty wholesome to me, uh, the Hornet. Are you ready to go? Do you have any words for Lomas? Oh, I'm so happy to be here, Mark. I love brothers and I love organized religion, so this is... I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Uh, buzz, buzz. I'm ready to go. First for us. The, the whole studio is buzzing now. Then let's get ready to Schmodown! All right. Curing a lot of favors with the fans yeah. is the Hornet. I really hope he stays nice. Let's see if he can answer some questions as well. Brother Lomas, Brandon Hanna, here we go. Question number one of ten and round number one coming from the category of Wizarding World. What is Tom Riddle's middle name? All right, big Wizarding World question on the line for you. Uh-oh. How do you like your butter beer, frozen or straight? So I'm going to probably just, this will be my last appearance. I've only seen one Harry Potter movie. I've never had butter beer. Whoa! I like it frozen. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Brother Lomas. 
Morvolo. Morvolo is correct. It does the Hornet. Sounds like a delicious dessert, Marvolo. Uh, it, it does sound like a nice Italian. Uh, yeah, I try it out. Yeah. Okay, so we move on to Marvel. Is the next category in the question. What Matrix actor plays investigative journalist Ben Urich in 2003's Daredevil? Did you uh, catch the newest Urich? Matrix. Uh, yes, I did. And? I, I thought it was kind of cool the way they leaned into the, you know, the, it was very meta. Very meta. Upon meta. Yep. With a layer of meta icing. Mm -hmm. Some meta filling in there. Five. Mm -hmm. Four. One pens down. Let's go to the Hornet. Oh, I don't think it's Harry Lennox. I don't think it's Harry Lennox either, but a worthy effort. Brother Lomas? Joe Pantoliano. Joe Pantoliano is correct. And so there we have it. Two to one. Lomas seizes the early lead in round one. Yeah, dr blood drawn early here as we get to question number three, coming from the category of Alien versus Predator. Which film features Damien Bashir, Carmen Ejogo, and Billy Crudup? I didn't switch the question. I just, one match. I just need it's one match where I pronounce everything right. It, it's just the way it falls sometimes. It'll never happen. Carmen Joko. I was just so happy I got Damien Bashir right. And I was I got, impressed. It got Five, harder. Four, Jogo. three, two, one. Let's go to Brother Lomas. Alien versus Predator. Is incorrect. So we go to Hitman for the tie. Excuse me, the Hornet. Whoa, I sure hope I don't form one of these today, an Alien Covenant. That is... <laughs> <laughs> Correct, and uh, I think the Punisher is really <laughs> proud of that retort as well. So we go to your next category, and that is Planet of the Apes. And the question, Charlton Heston has appeared in how many Planet of the Apes films excluding archival footage? So I actually had to show up and act. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't even know what that means. I'll explain to you later when you're <laughs> old enough. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go to the Hornet. He appears in three films, Mark. He does. Uh, Brother Wilmus had it. I did not. I only had two. He only had two. Oh, wow. So you got your Planet of the Apes. You got your Beneath the Planet of the Apes. And you have Let's Planet Apes from 2001. What? Archival footage would suggest that he was in the Planet of the Apes, the reboot with Rupert Wy uh, directly. So uh, there you go. There you have it. But it was three that he actually showed up and acted in. Back to you, Andrew. And back and forth here on the stage as well. Hannah now has the lead over Lomas, three to two. Question number five coming from the category of DC. In what DCEU film will you find a villain named Black Manta? Easiest, Nailed it. I mean, first time. One first try every time. time. One take wonder, they call me. Unbelievable. <laughs> as I put everybody watching to sleep with my explanation of what archival footage is. Five, four. Three, well, you see, it's something that happened two, before. One, <laughs> Let's go to Brother Lomas. Aquaman. Aquaman. He's back on the answering train is the Hornet. It sure is Aquaman. He stays on there. <laughs> All right, so we go to your next category, and that is Thank the world guys. of Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. And the question, who directed the film Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Do you like the new ones? Sure. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Chris Pratt is not here. I'm just not getting emotionally invested. Yeah. You know, like I was in the summer of 93 when I ate way too many buckets of corn watching dinosaurs. <sighs> Five. Changed everyone's lives. Four. Three. Two. One. Some could say it's responsible for the Star Wars prequels. Let's go to Brandon Hanna. I got to tell you, Mark, I sure do love sitting on the dock of the J.A. Bayona. <laughs> this guy's really given. Uh, yeah. Nice! Her money. Uh, Elaine, excuse me. Uh, let's go to Brother Lomas. J.A. Bayona. Yes, yes. But, uh, Here it is. The last girl was much better at puns. All <laughs> right. Question number seven coming from the category of Batman, the Dark Knight himself. What does Mr. Freeze steal to power his cryogenic suit in Batman and Robin? All right. Fun trivia question for you mm -hmm. and the chat. What was the first comic book featuring Batman? First? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say a, they're gonna see a movie or something. I, I love how you just take book. the ball and go home. You're like, I don't know. Uh, no. Detective Comics. Batman number one. I think it was Detective Comics twenty seven. Five, four, three, two, and a one. Let's go to Brother Diamonds. 
Diamonds is what he's looking to steal. How about the Hornet? I sure do like to shine bright like a diamond, Mark. Yeah, hey. diamond. Good for you. Bling, bling. All right. Buzz, buzz. Your next buzz, question buzz. is in the world of who said it slash quotes. And the question is, which Star Wars character says, who's the more foolish, the fool or the fool who follows him? Sounds like I'm talking about us. I was just going to say, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone said that about you and me. Right up here. At the park. We're still sorting out who it is. Yeah, those park onlookers, and we're working mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Not thrilled with our answer. No. Five, four, and we're three. Doing some really special stuff two, in that park. One. You are. I'm just watching. It's true. Ben's down. Let's go to the Hornet. It's a name I haven't heard in a long, long time. Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> not bad. Pretty good. Pretty Obi Wan good. Kenobi impression, brother Wamas. I did not have it. He did okay. not have it. Okay. So. Here's where we stand, seven to five. Neither competitor looking at a perfect round number one, but it's a solid matchup thus far as we head back to Andrew Guy for your what question? Question number nine in the category of fantasy sci-fi. Looking for penultimate, but go ahead. In the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Lucy Pavensi first finds the wardrobe when they are all playing what game? I was setting up to say penultimate, and... Um I can't even say Pavensi, <laughs> and it's written for just me. We're so it's gonna put you in a nice ice bucket after the match. Five. PJ and PLD, I'll four, be having my words. Three, two, one. Pens down, and we're going to Brother Wilmus. Hide and seek. Yeah, we're playing a little game of hide and seek, Hornet. One of my favorite pastimes, hide and seek. All right. It's a little weird for a grown man. I'm gonna go so far as to say it's creepy for a grown adult to You're say creepy. that. Thank you. You do you. Enjoy your hobbies, kids. Your next question and your final one in round number one is in the category of X-Men. Here we go. What is the name of the lake where Stryker's secret military base is located in X2, X-Men United? And you just know that's a sequel title that's going to trip someone up at some point. It is very hard oh, to remember. Yeah. X2 colon X-Men X United. And all of those colons, parentheses, or parentheses, spaces and punctuation all matter. Incredibly We're thinking way too hard. I just get me out of here, man. Four. The suit. <laughs> Three. Just sweating through it. Two. One. You will stay right there, young man. Pens down. Let's go to the Hornet. That would sure be Alkali Lake. Alkali Lake is correct, Brother Lomas. I forgot the K. Alkali. He got so oh. close with a lolly, but no, we were looking for Alkali Lake. And so it is nine to six here. It's a three point ball game. Brother Lomas playing well, but. Brandon Hanna showing some maybe experience. I was just going to say, I do feel like maybe the tutelage here of the Beast and the experience of as many matches and years that Hanna has spent in the league is maybe helping him bounce back from that miss. Whereas Lomas, it's hard. You got the lights, you got everyone in the crowd. When you miss that first one, it gets a little more difficult every time. Let's see if he can bounce back in round number two, Ellis. And as Lomas and you have pointed out, it is a little tough for a guy like Brother Lomas to be competing against someone named The Beast. And with yes. that, we now go to round number two. Here's how it works. Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Five questions emerge from each realm, worth two points apiece. Keep in mind, you can check to multiple choice, and stealing is available in this round and this round only. Hornet, it is up to you to make the decision. Do you want to spin first, or do you want to defer to your opponent? I think we'd like to spin first, Mark. Wow. All right, well, step right on up there, young buck. I have to admit, I'm always kind of happy to see the person in the lead take the first spin. They Why usually don't do it. It's just, buzz, it's buzz, just an interesting buzz, strategy. Buzz. I think normally you like to see where your opponent's at to make up ground. You know, buzz, when you go multiple buzz, choice buzz, and when buzz, you can't, buzz, as Radis buzz, is screaming. Buzz, yeah, we're trying to be buzz. adults Professionals here, up the, here. The buzz is starting to enrage Radis. All right, here comes the spin from the Hornet. Round and round it goes. Haven't had a wild card in a minute, yes! but that, look at that. There it is. All right, Hornet, are you feeling lucky? <laughs> Hear the chant from the audience saying, keep it. Maybe not the best decision, but I'm all for it. The crowd is buzzing. So, Brandon, just to recap, you can keep the wild card slice. It could be opponent's choice, could be spinner's choice, or it could be a random new category. Do you want to keep the wild card slice or spin again? I think I need to appease my new friends and keep it, Mark. He's wow. going to keep it, and so... Here comes the reveal, Brandon. When you're ready, try to peel that paper off and let's see what's behind it. Oh, oh man. man, there it is, Ellis. The risk, <laughs> the reward. You Good. see right there, gambling to impress his friends right. is the Hornet, and he gets Spinner's Choice, taking it to 
Jurassic Park. Right. Welcome to the world, and it really seems like they're getting under at least Radis' skin. I don't know about Lomas. He seems pretty unrattled by just about everything, but now the Beast and the Hornet striding confidently back, feeling like they've made a lot of new friends here in the studio audience, but more importantly, for their purposes in winning this match, they can choose whatever category they want. They have selected Jurassic Park. Andrew Guy will be administering those questions. And I'm a little jealous because I love dinosaurs. I, I had a feeling you might be, but Brandon, Hannah, the Hornet, rocking some style points. Now let's see how he does here in Jurassic Park. Brandon, you have all three of your repeats. Each of these is worth two points. You can check down, of course. You got a three-point lead. Jurassic Park starting right now. Which Jurassic Park film begins with the lines, everybody, head up, keep it clear. I'm going to stay with Jurassic Park. The OG is correct for two more points as we get to 11 to 6. Wow. And question number two here for the Hornet. In The Lost World, Jurassic Park, which character says, it's fine if you want to put your name on something, but stop putting it on other people's headstones? I believe that is Ian Malcolm. That is also correct for two more points. Brandon Hanna heating up here in round number two. That's right. Brother Lomas uh, got some nice run out of getting some steals in his previous match. Brandon Hanna not wanting to give any opportunities. He's perfect through two. Here's his third question. In Jurassic World, which actor plays Scott Mitchell, Karen's husband and father of Zach and Gray? Five, four, three. I'll use a repeat the question, please. All right, that's his first. In Jurassic World, which actor plays Scott Mitchell, Karen's husband and father of Zach and Gray? Five, four. I'm going to go multiple choice. All right. I can do that. Is it A, Tracy Letts? B, Rob Riggle, C, Andy Buckley, or D, Rob Corddry? I sure do always forget this guy's name, but it's Andy Buckley. Don't know who he is, but Brandon <laughs> Hanna sure does. One more point. He was great in the office. It, you might be watching, Andrew. You I, might... I'm sorry. Hi, Andrew. You, he probably doesn't know who I am either. You should be friends. You got the same name. It's not the same, Mark. All right, here we go. Jurassic Park. In Jurassic World, when the Indominus Rex is fully grown, how long will it be? I think I'll drop to multiple choice on this one. Too, yeah. Is it A, 75 feet, B, 58 feet, C, 50 feet, or D, 60 feet? I'm going to go with 60 feet. That is incorrect. Oh. Now for the one point steal, Brother Lomas, I'm going to repeat the question and then your options. In Jurassic World, when the Indominus Rex is fully grown, how long will it be? Is it A, 75 feet? B, 58 feet, C, 50 feet, or D, 60 feet? 50 feet. That is correct. A big, needed one-point steal. And we talked about his propensity for stealing in round yeah. number two. He pulls the trick again against the Hornet, but now we go back to Hannah for his final question in the world of Jurassic Park. In Jurassic Park 3, Udeski uses the batteries from what to power the video recorder? uses the powers from his flashlight. That is correct yeah. for two more points, yeah. 16 yeah. to seven. Yeah. Even yeah. though Lomas yeah. gets yeah. the steal, yeah. Brandon yeah. Hanna's still in a great yeah. spot. I would say he got Spinner's yeah. Choice. He got a category he wanted. Look, Intergeetum can get really tough. So if you get yeah. Spinner's Choice, you get Jurassic Park, you end up with a 16 to seven lead. That's nine points. I think that's right where the Hornet wants to be. But now it's Lomas's turn to head to the wheel and give it a spin. Maybe he can work some of that same magic or maybe Hanna is looking for a steal as well. It's always so tough when you go for your category, Ellis. You want to go absolutely perfect. You want to really reach for it, but sometimes you just can't do it. I mean, it's almost like MTS. you're performing in front of your parents or something, like, like a home crowd yeah. is there to yep. greet you. You put a little bit of pressure on you sometimes. All right, round and round the wheel goes, and that is heroes and villains. 
So now they're going to talk it over. And just for uh, folks tuning in here, Spinner's Choice is not eligible. If they spin that, they will just get a free respin. They're going to spin again. Away from heroes and villains, and it is... Oh! Wow. That is not a wild card that slice. Is, and that is not a, big a wild card slice. That is the worlds of Marvel. The ticker actually has to go across the oh peg. It is not. The audience oh now hates man. me as much as they love but Hannah, you know what? but it is the worlds of Marvel. Lomas has to be so happy with this. You're, you're, you're playing a losing game with one wild card slice gone already, and it being Spinner's choice. Yeah, right? could be opponent's choice. Uh, it, it could be something random, but again, something random, especially with inner geekdom, you kind of want to stick with something that you at least know what you're getting into. Here, for Brother Lomas, it is the worlds of Marvel. So here we go. Five questions for Brother Lomas. The current score is 16 to 7, and in case you're wondering, yes, that was the final score of Super Bowl three. I was wow. just going to ask that. The Jets beat the Colts. It was a big game. Amazing. Thank you. Your first of five questions, Brother Lomas, for two points. Which actor plays Foggy Nelson in the film Daredevil? John Favreau. Two points <laughs> for Brother Lomas. I bet and you like that movie. That's two for you. Good don't man. Speak to him, the cathedral is lovely. <laughs> Right, so uh, they're still figuring out their relationship. So we go to your next question. In the worlds of Marvel, what comical name do people start calling Spider-Man while he is unidentified while using his stealth suit in Spider-Man Far From Home? The Night Monkey. I've made it. <laughs> the way he <laughs> said it. Worst things to be called. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. 16 to 11, and Lomas cuts the lead to five. He's still got three questions remaining here. Here is your next one. In Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, Moreau mentions that Danny must be taken to the only place he will be safe in. What is this place called? Multiple choice. Oh. <laughs> Your four options for a point, is it A, the Haven, B, the Citadel, C, the Sanctuary, or D, the Order? I'm going to go with the Sanctuary. A place that uh, you probably visit often in your time. That is correct for a point. Oh, that is a huge point, Ellis. Check the multiple choice. Yep. And with that point, he still is in contention to be tied for the lead going into the deciding Round number three, Brandon Hanna still enjoying four points for the lead as of right now. And your next question, Lomas, and your penultimate one in the worlds of Marvel. Michael Douglas has played Hank Pym in how many films? Five, four, three, two. That is incorrect. And so for a two-point steal, we go to the Hornet. The question, Michael Douglas has played Hank Pym in how many films? Fortunately, I think he was forgetting about Avengers Endgame, and it's three. Not counting archival footage. That is correct <laughs> for three <laughs> movies. And two points for Brandon Hanna. That's a tough one. You know, when you talk about questions like that, Ellis, you really only go on the other side of it. When you take a guess and it's incorrect, you go either one more or one less. Brandon Hanna picks up a huge steal right there. That's right. Uh, Lomas and uh, the Hornets sort of playing tennis with some steals right now. But we go back to Brother Lomas for his final question. He can cut the lead back down to four with this final question in the worlds of Marvel. Here it is. Who plays the mutant Chris Bradley, also known as Bolt, in X-Men Origins Wolverine? Multiple choice. All right, your four <laughs> options. Is it A, Will I Am, B, Taylor Kitsch, C, Dominic Monaghan, or D, Kevin Durand? Dominic Monaghan. Not to be confused with Kevin Durant, the basketball right. player. Dominic Monaghan is the correct answer at the end of the day. And so Lomas does save some face there after Hannah with that huge steal, which could prove to be crucial. 18 to 13. I don't believe a Super Bowl has ever ended in that score. It is a five-point lead for the Hornet as we head into the deciding round number three. Here's how it works. Each competitor has three total questions. They increase in difficulty and point value. First question is two points. Next one, three points. Your final question is worth five points. Whoever's leading at the end of this is going to be declared the winner of the match. Brother Lomas has 13 points, but it's the Hornet with 18. Five-point lead for you, Brandon. Your three lucky numbers 
From 1 to 16, these numbers will correspond to the category you're being asked the question from. I'd like to pick 7, 8, and 9, Mark. 7, 8, okay. and 9 make it easy for us up here because he's an affable young fellow and Brother Lomas. One, two, and three. Oh, yeah, wow. Even wow. Easy. wow. I don't know who hits the point for that one. I like them both. Man. All right. So Brother Lomas will be fielding questions first, uh, according to Andrew Guy's questioning. He's going to try to pick up some points here with the answer. So Brother Lomas, again, nice guy, making it easy on us. He selected category one for his two-point. What's he looking at? We are going to go to X-Men for your two-pointer, Brother Lomas, and to cut that lead down to three. In The Wolverine, which two mutants encounter Logan at an airport in the film's mid-credits scene? Five. Repeat the question. All right. That's your first one. The category of X-Men for two points. In The Wolverine, which two mutants encounter Logan at an airport in the film's mid-credits scene? Magneto and Professor X. I don't think he was happy with the answer, but that is correct uh, for two points. Now Lomas at 15. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that, I mean, it's a tough two-pointer. <laughs> it, it really it, is. And I, I think Lomas was just like, hey, here's two guys I know from the movie. Ended up being the correct answer. And so now we're going to stick with Lomas, but he has a chance to tie the lead of the horn and put some pressure on him if he hits his three-pointer, Andrew. He's selected category two. What are we looking at? It's going over to our favorite web slinger, your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, for three points here. I Logan. believe his name is Night Monkey. Night, <laughs> excuse me. This is why I'm up here, Mark. For three points, and to tie it up, in Avengers Endgame, which character says to Peter, hey, Peter Parker, you got something for me? Five, four, MJ. Three. Oh, wow. That is Incorrect. We were looking for Captain Marvel mm. herself. So we are going to stay with you, Brother Lomas, for your five-point question. If you hit this, we send it back over to Hannah, who will have to answer at least two to take that W. And for your five-pointer, you selected at number three. We're going to Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes for five points and to send it back over to the Hornet. All right, here we go. It all comes down to this. In Rise of the Planet of the Apes, what is the name of the space shuttle seen entering Mars's atmosphere? Icarus. <laughs> that is correct! Yeah! Five big points there for Brother Lomas. I mean, hey, he knows what he knows, and he, wow. and, and he knows what he does it. Yeah, I mean, the two-pointer he struggled with, he missed the three-pointer, and the five-pointer, it's like, oh, everybody knows that. Easy Icarus. money. Icarus, duh. All right, don't fly too close to the sun, <laughs> kids, especially if you have wax wings. So it is now 20 to 18 in favor of Brother Lomas, Brandon Hanna now has the opportunity to tie right now with his two-pointer, but more importantly for him, he can win it outright if he hits a three or a five. Doesn't even need to hit this two, right. but he's probably going to give it an effort anyway. Brandon Hanna, you selected your numbers. Lucky and also very nice to us. Seven, eight, and nine. And right now, Joe Theismann's number corresponds to Alien and Predator for two points. Here's your question to Ty Lomas. Sanaa Lathan stars as Lex Woods, an experienced guide in which 2004 film? That would be Alien vs. Predator, Mark. I was pretty excited when that movie came out. I'd two two points <laughs> for the Hornet. Not really going to get my thoughts on it now. That's a good idea. 20 to 20, we are all deadlocked. At Barry Sanders' number. So now for the win outright, Brandon Hanna selected category number eight. And that corresponds to our nation's capital, DC, uh, excuse me, it's DC yeah. Comics Movies. <laughs> and here is your question for the win over Brother Lomas. What was the name of the kid that we saw bully Clark as a youth in the Man of Steel flashbacks? We just need the first name.
five, four, three. I'd like a repeat, please. All right, that is your second repeat. You have one remaining. What was the name of the kid that we saw bully Clark as a youth in the Man of Steel flashbacks? Fred. Is a good name, but it's a solid guess. Yeah. We're going for Pete or Pete Ross is the name of the kid bullying Clark. Hey, kid, don't bully anyone at home, especially if that someone happens to be an alien from Krypton. Because yeah, they, uh, not the guy you want to bully when you grow up. But, Ellis, we find ourselves in a very peculiar situation. Brandon Hanna is kind of playing with house money right now. He can't lose at this moment, sure. but he doesn't want to go into sudden death, which no, you is don't. why you really want to hit those twos and those threes. But that's a tough three. Let's see if he can make up for it here on the hardest question of the match. The category selected by Brandon Hanna, maybe unknowingly so, he picked number nine, is animated movies, animated films. And here is your question for five points and the win. In what animated film does the villain say the line, your angel of death awaits to all of its victims when it first appears to them. Five, four. Repeat three. the question, please. All right, that's his final repeat. Category is animated. The question for five points and the win. In what animated film does the villain say the line, your angel of death awaits to all of its victims when it first appears to them? Brandon Hanna has no repeats left. He must answer within the 15 seconds allotted. Again, he cannot lose here, but you never want to go to sudden Five, death. four, three. The Incredibles. We're looking for Batman Mask of the Fantastic. Oh. We have sudden death overtime here. It is 20 to 20. Brandon hits the two to tie, misses the three, misses the five. Yep. Brother Lomas. Hits his five, and so now here we are with sudden death, and the rules are as follows. It's going to feel a lot like a round one match because the whiteboards are back. Andrew and myself will be asking a question worth a point. If both competitors miss it, we move on to another question, but if one competitor gets it correct, the other one misses, the correct answer or is declared the winner of the match. All right, so now the competitors are set for sudden death overtime, and uh, th this is where it Yes, gets. man, I'm so excited. You heard the really, crowd really cheering. Fun. This is awesome. You're damn right it is. All right, so again, we're not gonna reveal the category. We're just gonna simply ask the question, and you have 15 seconds to answer. One repeat, and your challenge still in effect. Andrew Guy, when you're ready, we kick off sudden death. All right, your first question in sudden death. Who composed the score for Men in Black? tough to know when to use during this, Ellis. I mean, you got it. You might as well use it. May not be it tomorrow. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, Brother Lomas. Danny Elfman. And Brandon Hanna. That'd be Danny Elfman. They both had Danny go. Elfman. Oh. Nice oh. Fun spot. All right. Your next question. Sudden death for a point. In how many films of the RoboCop franchise did Peter Weller play the title character? And we've seen sudden death matches go longer and longer Yep, and longer. I think the record still might be nine or even double digits, but it gets more and more tense with every question. In Inner Geekdom and Star Wars specifically, <laughs> you <laughs> never know when it's going to end. Three, two, one. Let's go to the Hornet. That would be two. And Brother Lomas? Two. They're both correct. <laughs> the other thing I really love about Sudden Death is the audience is just cheering now. Yeah, they, they don't yeah. care. They yep. want both of them to go forever as we get into question number three of Sudden Death. Gentlemen, what year saw the release of An Unexpected Journey? And it's just a test of so many different facets. Not just the categories, but also like here, it's a, it's a movie release date question. All right, counting you down in five, four, three, two. This is dangerous. One. Let's go to Brother Lomas. 2011. And Brandon Hanna. It's 2012. And your winner, Brandon. Oh my God! The whole entire match.
match. Bubble Bowman spot. Five, two, five, 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 five,
his future is looking bright. Again, he's just getting started, especially with Inner Geekdom. Now he's got a win and he's got a loss, and sometimes you have to taste that defeat do. in order to be a phoenix rising from the ashes. And so now, Steph, we toss it back to you for an interview with Brother Lomas and, uh, I, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Bra, the Rager, Rick Raddus. Brother Lomas, I'm not going to lie. Every time I'm around you, I'm worried I'm going to light on fire for all the sinning I've done. Uh, but it does feel good to be in your presence once again. I know that the result of the match didn't probably end up how you wanted, but you brought him all the way to sudden death. What are your thoughts on how it all went down? First, Sister Sabra, I offer confessional hours every Monday from 3 to 7 p.m. if you need to unburden your soul. Secondly, I came out here today because Brandon Hanna was claiming he wanted to be good. And there is only one person in the Schmodown that can guide you to true goodness, and that is Brother Lomas. But he chose to follow the filthy path of College Andrew, and that will lead him nowhere but to ruin. I will come back to the IDE division. I will lay waste to these infidels, and I will teach Brandon Hanna the meaning of good. Oh, wow. Um, I'm shooketh with that preach right there. But I, I know redemption, I think, is spoken somewhere in the Bible. And that seems like the path that you're going on next. Is Brandon the main you want to get back and beat Brandon? Or you just want to get back and get another match in the IG? Well, his soul may be too far gone to save. So I'm probably going to start with someone else first. But eventually, I will work my way back around to him and give it a shot. I'm, I'm not a quitter. I don't think you are, and I'm excited to see that day. Rick, what did you think about how the match went down tonight? It was fantastic. Look, you gotta realize, you're looking at a three-division player. First time, debut in this division, knockout. Goes to sudden death. Some of the best players in the game can't stack up in sudden death. It is very intense, and he did beautifully. And let me, let me make something clear okay. to what you were saying, my good brother. Ricky Rage has gone down some dark alleys and some weird websites, but never once has he gotten the willies like he did looking at that absolute creep, Brandon Hanna. That man has a sickness of the soul. Get help. The man has to wear a mask to come to the schmodown, and it is rife with villainy and perversion. Um, I, I don't know if it's that, but I do hear you. I think you're val you, I, I want you to feel validated, but I don't know if I agree amen. with you. Yeah, amen, amen. So now, uh, looking forward, what are you going to take away from this match to apply in the next? That the red arrow goes on the other side on the wheel. That's deep, man. Thank you so much, you two. Uh, have a great rest of your night. Back to you at the desk. I think a bright future, and regardless of what division that Brother Lomas wants to compete, I think he's a competitor to be feared for some time in the movie trivia showdown. Yeah, you know, it's really about finding your place in this league. And I, I, again, Mike, I love, hate you, brother, but he's a guy that has been so good in so many divisions, but he's the king of inner geekdom. Yep. Lomas, he's played in singles. He's now played in inner geekdom. Maybe we'll see him more in teams. Maybe we'll see him more just in IG. It's all up to him with what he wants to do with his future. Yeah, well, you know, if we see more Brother Lomas, you know who else we're probably going to be seeing. Oh, yeah. I the do. Rager. And the chest hair. And Rick the beard. Bradis. And the robe. And yeah. what's underneath that robe for just, some reason. Just please it's do not lose the belt to I that robe. Uh, speaking of belts, Brandon Hanna now has a winning record in Inner hey. Geekdom. And maybe he's starting to get some sugar plum visions of having a belt across his shoulder in the future. That remains to be seen. What we know right now is that we have one heck of a headlining match coming up Woo! next right here on Friday Night Titans. We'll be right back. You know, so many different times I'm going through the comments section and I see, oh, I would have gotten that one right. I could be a Schmodown personality. You think you have what it takes to become a Schmodown champion? Well, the auditions for season nine, it's open all year. You submit a three to five minute video to Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com. You want to be a champion? Of course, you got to be good at trivia. But are you a personality? Do you have a big character? Show us what you got. Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com and become the next big star of the Schmodown tomorrow. Glad you're watching the matches, and I hope you're having a fun time. I also wanted to know if you didn't know already, we got a brand new channel. It's the Christian Harloff channel. Head on over there, subscribe to it. I have so much stuff on this channel. I have reviews, trailer reactions. I have the big thing. If you didn't know what that was, it's a podcast that I do, and I have guests on all the time. Wednesday nights, I have Sith Council. It's our Star Wars show. Lots of great stuff. If you didn't know I have my own channel, well, I do. So you should head on over there, subscribe. All right, now get back to watching this. Tweet at me. Tell me what you thought about tonight's episode. 
The Wildberries are back. You know what that means? The Wildberry shirts are back. Everybody wants a Wildberry shirt. That's their whole shtick. But you know about Lady Justice? Support Marisol McKee and get one of those shirts. How about your favorite factions? Whether it's corruption, swag, the list goes on and on and on. The brand new reboot shirt, it is on the store at Skybound right now. We have a bunch of stuff on the Schmodown store right now. Please go and check that out. Share it on our social media, hashtag Schmodown, and let everyone else see you do it. It's the Schmodown. We are back here on Friday Night Titans, and we are set for, I would say, one of the more anticipated teams matchups ever. Oh, and by the way, it's a number one contender shot. The winner goes on to play the current reigning team champions of the Schmodown, Shazam. It's King Arthur taking on Danger Zone. You have some intel on one of those teams. Yeah, I mean, you guys might be seeing up here. Look, I'm excited to be on the desk. I'm always excited to be on the desk. I love being up here. It's a lot of fun with you. But one thing I'm not excited about is uh, rudeness, as shocking as that might be coming from someone like me. But also I am being shocked to hear that. Betrayed by my best friend. Yeah. Uh, it, it turns out that Ben, the boss, Bateman, had been setting me up and jobbing me since day one, knowing that he was going to team up with Nate Danger Zone, knowing he was going to pull a fast one on the den, knowing he was going to embarrass Peggy Gubbins. It, it's despicable. So I decided to have words with Bateman and with Merle, and I'll be honest. I thought Dan and I had come a long way since uh, our first match, the only match we ever played against each other. I know it didn't go the way that he liked, but I met his family. I met his mother. I I I've been a part of his real life. We've been real life friends since then. I talked to him. It was hate. It was disgust. He talked down to me. It was condescending. It was the worst experience I've had speaking to anyone in the Schmodown, and I'm the dastardly one, Ellis. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Y you're... You seem really hurt by this. I just couldn't believe it. This isn't from even Ben and from Dan. I, you know, was upset. But look, I, but here's the thing, and maybe this is sort of like twisting that dagger in your back a little bit more. Is that the fan reaction when they figured out who Jeff was, who came in under the guise of being one of Ben Bateman's best Patreon supporters, ends up being Dan Merle. And they went crazy. And so that's got to, again, I'm not taking glee in your suffering. I love having you up here at the desk yeah. because God knows I hate having you up there. I want you right here where we can be pals, but it does feel like it actually wounded you, and I am sorry for that. Look, I'm going to be as professional as I can up here. I'm going to be unbiased in how I rule and ask questions, but I will say that I'm rooting for two individuals up here to succeed and two to <laughs> fail. Don't worry. We have the questions already prepared. They cannot be changed at this point. Uh, but King Arthur also has some question marks attached to that. Now, we know the power of King Khan and downtown Griffey Nooms. But when you combine their forces, who is going to be managing them? That is the question. Will Gucci show up tonight? What says Andrew Guy? It's been really odd to not see as much as Gucci around. You know, you're careful what you wish for, right? It's a guy that we've been hoping wouldn't show up. I mean, I don't want him to be here. In years. I, yeah, fair. I mean, honestly, I'm just doing my job up here. I'm reading the prompter. But... It is surprising to his teammates, especially in a situation like this. King Arthur, a very promising team. You saw them dominate last season. They almost got the belts off of Shazam. They ended up losing it spectacular. This seems like a match, if any, for Gucci to show up to. Danger Zone, King Arthur. There's a lot of unlikable components of both of those teams, but sure. man, are they really good at trivia. You know who we do love? Shazam. They're just That's nice true. guys, right? Yes, yes. Ah, sweethearts. The them. Beast, the Kid, Koi, they're all adorable. They're not here, but the winner tonight <laughs> will play them for the belt in the team's division. It's your headlining match here on Friday Night Titans, and now we turn it over to the pit boss, Ken Knapsack. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our friends around the world, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmoda. <laughs> This next match is scheduled for three rounds in the team's division. Introducing first. With a record of five wins and three defeats and one knockout. Representing the dead. Accompanied by their manager, Kate Mulligan. Dangerous. Dead. Merle. Ben. The boss. Bateman. Danger Zone! Some booze reading Danger Zone, and I hear one of those booze in my ear. Oh, is that, is that, am I doing that out loud? Coming from 
Andrew guy. There is Kate Mulligan. That appeared to be Ben Bateman saying he's number one. Yep, and uh, so. Dan Merle up there as well. They are set up there at the desk. Uh, ben has his. That wasn't uh, my mom, by the way, guy. You, you don't deserve to meet my mom. <laughs> you, you didn't even meet the guy's he real mom? He hired an actress to scold me. That's yes. how far he wanted. All right, Dan. Yes, All right. Did. You were grounded for three weeks without phone privileges by an imposter. What could happen next? Well, I guess we're going to see who is managing King Arthur right now. And their opponent, with a record of three wins and one defeat and one knockout, representing the Finstock Exchange and accompanied by no one. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fair enough. King Kong. Downtown Griffey News. King Arthur. All right. Uh, the news presenting the King. God, uh, look at this. They're just so Excuse ridiculously me. Whoa. Excuse me. Everyone in this room right now is in the presence of royalty. I want knees touching the ground. It's a danger zone, would you care to apply? This is a king! I, I'm on my a king! Knee. I'm on my knee! I mean, I, yeah, we're, we're on our knee. Knee is touching ground Knees here. are on the ground over I, here. I'm feet on ground, I'm thinking heel on ground. It's I'm very painful. We don't take yoga. Yeah, no. <laughs> danger zone or Kate, would you care to kneel before the king? No, no, I'll tell you what. I don't believe that's yeah. the way you're supposed to speak. No, 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 that's interesting. A swift kick in the ass would be an easy shortcut to getting someone to kneel. Yes, I would agree to those terms. <laughs> Griffin, it's on a behalf family of my show. Kid. Let's get enough of this talk about our knees. Get over to your phone. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't like the implication. Uh, uh, I was I, trying to yeah, show respect. I know respect what you thought you were doing. Ah, get, get over there. All right. Well, let's just uh, maybe get the match started in a congenial manner here as King Arthur Whoa. makes okay, their fun. way to their respective question podium. Uh, my question is going to be, are the teams ready? But before we get there, I will read the rules of round number one. Uh, and before I do that, I'm just going to ask my announcing partner. You good to go? Uh, yeah, it appears, though, that Danger Zone is bored with us. So let's get this show on the You've road. You've been throwing apparently. a lot of curveballs. I'll introduce you to my real mom at some point. Thank you. Possibly. I'm, I'm In round number one, ten questions will emerge to the field. Each question worth a point. There's no penny for missing a question. Each team, as a squad, has three usages of a repeat. That's three repeats if you need us to repeat the question. You also each have one challenge to be issued by your manager, or if they're passed out in a dumpster somewhere, you can just go ahead and usher it yourself. Fine with us up here at the answer desk. And so now we will first ask Danger Zone. Uh, ben and uh, Dan Merle. Dan, have you paid your patron fees to Ben this month? <laughs> Sorry, where are we? <laughs> I've, you've been talking so long, I forgot what we were doing here. It's a normal match intro, uh, Alice. I, I'm, just, I'm just doing the rules here. Uh, are you ready to play? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Th Let's go. See? King Arthur, are you ready to go? Yeah, looking in the monitor, I'm wishing I had bleached pre-match. Yeah. I'm just realizing I got slightly different shades of white going on. It's hard to... Uh, the, uh, a lot of different uh, opaque, off-white, beige. Uh, King Khan, you ready to go? King's ready. Uh, Ken, bail us out here. Ellis, if I may. Uh, oh, God. You know, I just want to... Hey, guys, no, it's... Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, you may. Can I, please? Ten minutes of rules, and I, you boo him for soccer I, no, for ten seconds. I didn't seconds. get asked if I was ready. Did right? They, they, they brought the B go. team today. Look. Griffin, I just wanted to say it's, it's nice to have you back in the Schmodown. I, I, I relate to you, man. I mean, I know what it's like to show up at Spectacular and lose both my matches. Oh, wait! I did the exact opposite. Have a good match. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Glad we took a detour for that. Yeah, thank uh, God for that. Ken, please, uh, for the love of God. Let's get ready to schmoda. Uh, I feel like I need a shower after that pre-match, but here we go. All professionalism from here on out, I'm sure, from both squads. Ten points coming your way from all across the movie trivia universe, starting with our favorite, Mixed Bag. Mm -hmm. What word is missing from the following movie titles? Blank of the Pink Panther, Jaws the Blank, and Blank of the Sith. It's the hardest question I've ever read. I in know, my life. You, you, you crushed it. I so worried. All the emotions that are churning through your tummy right now. <laughs> You're looking at your former best friend up there, some guy you thought you knew. Yep. You don't even know any of his family members, as it turns out. Con, I can't I, wait. I can't I've wait been for telling you to people you guys for lose. years I met I'm Dan Merle's mother. <laughs> Think you got this first one, buddy? Five. Think you got it? Four. You ready? Ben badgering Three. his opponent. <laughs> Two. One. Pens down, and let's go to Dan Merle. One of my favorite things in the world. It's delicious. 
Revenge. Jaws of Revenge, pretty great movie. Let's go to Ben Bateman. Revenge. And King Kong. Revenge. And Downtown. I perhaps was overly ambitious in trying to draw Jaws, the Pink Panther, and Darth Vader. Mm. I, I can it make that up. It got progressively worse. I think Jaws is pretty clean, Darth is okay, and Pink Panther's bad, but Revenge uh, is the worst. They all kind of look like Orko to me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's good design. It's classic to. design. Yeah. Your next question is in the category of sequels and prequels. And for a point apiece, Rosalind Sanchez and Don Cheadle join Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker in what 2000s action comedy sequel? Hmm. You know, at this point, you just hope all the trash talk wears itself out by round one. You yeah, know, you I'll be honest. You just want a well-played, clean match by the end of it. Ellis, I can't imagine that happens. But you know what? <laughs> I'm happy to give out a warning. Five, four, three. You do have that power now. I do. Two, one. Pens down. Let's start with downtown Griffey Nooms. Uh, Rush Hour 2, I also want to make it clear, King Arthur doesn't participate in trash talk. We just are uh, astounded by the uh, lack of respect paid to royalty today. Why, King Arthur, one of my favorite competitors. Uh, did you have the answer? Rush Hour 2. That is correct. Did Ben Bateman have the correct Rush Hour film? Rush Hour 2. And Dangerous Dan Merle. Rush Hour 2. There it is. Perfect so far. All right, as we move on to question number three, category is dystopian future and time travel. Who plays George McFly opposite Michael J. Fox in Back to the Future? See, this is what we do. We handle our business like professionals. That's right. You know, we get a little flustered at home. But once and the question the asking starts, we're on it. That's right. Watch That's this. Why we are the B team, apparently. Five, four. I'm glad you heard my joke. Three, Thank you. Two, one. Don't take the bait. Pens down. Let's go to bait men first. Crispin Glover. He is correct. And Dan Merle. Hey, you. It's Crispin Glover. <laughs> Get your damn hands off. <laughs> not bad. Uh, Kid Con. Crispin Glover. And Griffey Dooms. Appreciate you not asking who played him in Back to the Future Part 2. It's Crispin Glover. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a very tough question. Jeffrey to Weissman. Oh, we're, we're just going to go to... You see, Griffin, he's smarter than you are. Your next category is Marvel Films. And the question, which of the following actors has not lent their talents to a Marvel film? Alexander Skarsgård, William Hurt, Jeff Goldblum, or Bill Skarsgård? You figure they're related with a last name like that. No, nope. two nope. totally different. I have no idea. Shocking. Yeah. I don't do a lot of uh, research now that I have all the answers in front of me. Like Quite the Gyllenhaals. Who'd have thought they weren't related? Uh, yeah, just a weird last name. So weird. Could be Gyllenhaal from one of them. Who it knows? probably is. Five, four, three, two, one. Kate Mulligan just perplexed by our improv magic. Let's go to... King Kong first. You think with how jacked he was with the Northman, he would have been in one, but it's Alexander Skarsgård. That is a great movie reference and a correct answer. Griffey Nooms? Never got over being number two for Thor. Alexander Skarsgård. And Ben Bateman? Yeah. I wrote Alexander Skarsgård. Yes. You, Did I mean, you? barely. My God, you have the biggest whiteboard. Yeah. And the We're going to need you to right. clean up that penmanship. Yeah. Bateman. Uh, Dan Merle? Northman should be a hero, but he's not in the MCU. Alexander Skarsgård. <laughs> All right. We got there. Everybody's perfect so far. I just wish they liked us. <laughs> Question number five coming in the category of 2010s. What 2016 mystery comedy from writer and director Shane Black follows private detective Holland March and enforcer Jackson Healy in 1977, Los Angeles? You know, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say 2020. Because, like, 2010s, 2010s. Right, right, right. Nobody ever says 2020. It's all 2020. It's all 2020. Yeah. I'm getting dumber. Yeah, I know. They talk a lot. Is that possible, Ellis? <laughs> I think they're, they're implying that as we talk, we make people stupid. I see that. Five, four. It's a hard point to argue. Three. I'm sorry, what? Two, one. Pens down, and let's go to Danger Zone. Dan Merle. The Nice Guys? Is correct. Ben Bateman. The Nice Guys. The antithesis of Danger Zone. There it is. Uh, King Kong. <laughs> you stole my joke, Ellis. But yeah, it is The Nice Guys. <laughs> sorry too. about that. Yeah. That's not Griffey yeah, My joke is it was an alternate name for our team, The Nice Guys. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> like that. Good writer's room. Flip it on its head. You're keeping it together, Con. You're keeping it together, buddy. You look good. You're talking right. trash to a person who's performed the exact same as he has so far. <laughs> Medieval <laughs> times, you would have been executed for a statement like that. Next question is in the lucky. category of action adventure film. And here we go. Of the following actors, who does not appear in the 2002 action comedy Showtime? Eddie Murphy, Bruce Greenwood, Robert De Niro, or William Shatner? <laughs> That's a dinner table right there. Showtime. Much like the uh, Los Angeles Lakers team of the 80s depicted in the film Winning Time. Because they couldn't say Showtime. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Because that's a different cable network. Have you watched that yet? It's great. Yeah? Yeah. 
I've heard Jerry that West doesn't think so. And Nabzok. Five. Well. Four. Three. Ken loves it. He Two. does. One. Pens down. Let's go to downtown Griffey Nooms. Uh, it's not the only problem with the movie, but the film certainly could have benefited from a little bit of Bruce Greenwood. Uh, couldn't we all? Couldn't every movie? King Con? Bruce Greenwood. That had, how about Ben Bateman over there? Bruce Greenwood. There it is. The penmanship is slowly but surely rounding. Getting a little better. Uh, Dan Merle. William Shatner is one of my favorite actors, but I said Bruce Greenwood. Because uh, you wanted to make a correct answer. Yeah. It's a good choice, I think, by Dan yeah. Merle up there. I, I'd say he made the right call. Perfect round so far. Question number seven coming your way in the category of biopics. Which Academy Award winning actor plays the role of Skip Ingblom, Ingblom, who created the Z-Boys skateboard team in the 2005 biographical drama Lords of Dogtown? I mean, you talk about a tongue twister of the name. Yeah. Ingblom. Ingblom. I bet you he got made fun of. My I last name is Guy, and I got made fun of, so I don't think it really matters. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're one of them. <laughs> it was funny. I'm a funny bully. Five, four, don't bully kids. Three, two, one. And that goes for the teams, too. Pets down. Let's go to, oh, God, Ben Bateman. I think it's wrong, actually. I wrote Heath Ledger. Ah, uh, you're right. Uh, Dan Merle. No joke here. Just respect. Heath Ledger. And King Kong. Heath Ledger. Downtown. Heath Ledger as Val Kilmer as Skip Engblom. <laughs> Fair. I like that answer. Yeah. All right, we careen into famous actors and actresses. They're doing well in life. And your question, which actor appeared in the following films? Jack Ryan, Shadow Recruit, 3,000 Miles to Graceland, and Mr. Brooks. Anytime that anyone talks about Mr. Brooks, I will just throw in that movie is underrated. Oh, yeah. You know, Andrew, this is one of the rare times. Ben, do not talk to me while I'm at the desk. <laughs> Oh, you, you can guys talk have to us, but we can't talk to you. you guys have a discrepancy over your feelings on Mr. Brooks? Uh, I actually think we feel pretty similarly about Mr. Brooks, as we all should. Five, Did it four, hurt you to cut me off? Three, Mr. Brooks? two, break your heart. One. Pens down, and let's go to downtown Griffey News. The man who I argue should be able to claim or reclaim the title of the cause, Kevin Costner. That's very, very uh, proper. Let's go to King Con. Star of Draft Day, Kevin Costner. Uh, ben Bateman? Yeah. Kevin Costner. And Dan Merle. Kevin Costner. You know, uh, the, the various levels of likability and yes. dislikability, but they're all perfect thus far through eight questions here in round one to remain. Here we go. Musicians in film for your ninth question. Mary J. Blige portrays Venus club owner Justice Charlier in what 2010s musical featuring Catherine Zeta-Jones and Paul Giamatti? You know, that, uh, that Kevin Costner... Good in sports movies. <laughs> he's a, he's Tin a good, cup. He's a, is he a better sports movie guy or a better dad? Repeat the question. Movies. All right, we'll have to get back to that. Yep. Question number nine in the category of musicians in film. Mary J. Blige portrays Venus club owner Justice Charlier in what 2010s musical featuring Catherine Zeta-Jones and Paul Giamatti? I don't know that Kevin Costner is a great dad in movies. What yeah. film were you thinking of? Uh, mainly just Man of Steel. Oh, yeah. But he's so good in there. Yeah, pretty you good pop. You are my son. Yeah. I mean, you, you say that to me all the time. Your kid's a damn alien. Yeah. Let him save your life. Yeah, but he still handled it. Good man, that Kevin Costner. Five, four, three. He I have a feeling the crowd hates us, too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes, what? We're doing a good job Hands today. Hands down, let's go to King Kong. I don't believe I have it. I said burlesque. That uh, is incorrect. How about Downtown Griffey Nooms? Uh, I believe it is Un Film du Adam Shankman, Rock of Ages. That yeah. is very French and very correct. Yep. Uh, ben Bateman. Didn't have it. Wow. Didn't have it as well, Whoa. Dan Merle. Oh. Rock of Ages. There it is. He, he, he learned how to do that sigh <laughs> from Ben Bateman. And so <laughs> King <laughs> Arthur and Ben Bateman out of the perfect round running. Downtown Griffey Nooms and Dangerous Dan Merle still in there, but we're still tied. 17 apiece, and we head to your final question here in round number one in the category of horror films. And here we go. Huh. Who plays the lead role of Frank Bannister, a former architect turned ghost hunter after the trauma of his wife dying in Peter Jackson's The Frighteners? Man, imagine being that guy's dad or mom. Went from an architect to a ghost hunter. Yeah. How's your boy? Is he still building houses? Uh, don't ask about him. What's don't he Don't ask about Frank. He built that building on Main Street. Yeah, yeah. He's still in it. Yeah, now, now he's looking for orbs. Looking for his dead wife. Five. Four, not to be confused with Roger Bannister. I don't know who that is. He broke the four-minute mile for the first time. Pens down. How interesting. No one's even listening <laughs> to me anymore. <laughs> We're just talking to ourselves up here. Let's go to Dangerous Danmore. 
Michael J. Fox. You know that was interesting. Ben Bateman. <laughs> Michael J. Fox. Ken Khan. Hey, look, we got Marty and George in the same round. Michael J. Fox. And downtown Griffey News. Are you telling me the answer is Michael J. Fox? <laughs> yes, in fact, I am. And so it is 19 to 19, just one missed question for each team. Yeah. And so downtown Griffey News and dangerous Dan Merle will now be asked a bonus question. You're still writing this one down, gentlemen. It's going to be issued by Andrew Guy, who likes one of you more than the other. All right, to the competitor over here and to downtown Griffey News. <laughs> What year saw the release of the following films, Escape from New York, History of the World Part 1, and Rick Rosenthal's Halloween 2? Now, normally coming out of a round with both teams being at 19, you're in a pretty good spot, but these are championship caliber teams. Yeah. They know they wanted that perfect, double perfect round. And you know Bateman's bummed that he missed out on a movie you release date. I'm right. sure he's really upset about yeah, missing so that question I. in front of everybody. Five, four. A world is watching. That's Three. right, Ben. You missed Two. it. One. Pets down and let's go first to Dan Merle. I said 1981. And you would be correct in doing so. 1981. Wow. Downtown Ruby Nooms had it as well. And so it is 20 to 20. It is 2020. And I'm Barbara hey. Walters as we head into round number two here, where each team gets a spin at the wheel. Once they settle on a category, five questions will emerge, each one worth two points. Should the team need multiple choice, that question value is reduced to one. Keep in mind, stealing is available in round number two. So we have an even score by proxy of a tiebreaker. King Arthur will be afforded the option to either spin first or defer to their opponent's danger zone. So King Arthur is manager-less, but yep. they seem to have pretty good chemistry. Downtown Griffey Nooms, King Khan, what would you like to do? Spin the wheel first? If or I could just, I'm sorry to correct you quickly. I would prefer that you say we are a, a sovereign nation rather than manager less. Uh, the sovereign nation yeah, of. I like that. Thank like you. That. And King I think we will spin first. If Arthur is going to yeah. spin first. Wow, okay. All right. That's the, really all I needed. Yeah. Um, yeah. The whole so. Okay. so the sovereign nation of King Arthur may go and spin we the wheel. And a, a surprising first spin here. It's usually not the way you yeah. want to go when you're up, but also the, this team, King Arthur, has had a lot of success. Let's see if this pays off. Yes. Yeah. All right. So the spin is now in for King Kong. And downtown Griffith. Good spin, sir. All right. And round around it goes. Could we have a wild card? Hey, we, do. we do. All right. And so now they are putting the dice on the table. Do they want to roll them in the form of a wild card slice? Underneath that wedge could be spinner's choice, could be opponent's choice, or it could be a mystery category never before seen in the Schmodown. What is the decision of King Arthur, the sovereign nation? Of King Arthur. They already spun first. I mean, maybe they take wild card here. It would be very shocking. We would like to spin again, please. They're going to yeah. spin again. Yeah. All right. Number one contender match. A lot of pressure. Yeah. A lot yeah. of bad blood. Right. Round and round it goes. If it lands on another wild card slice, they will be forced to take it. And it is. And it is. Oh. This is a different wild card slice, though. So it's going to be very interesting what's underneath okay. here. Okay. At your ready, we want you to just peel that slice and reveal okay. what is please, under. Please, please, please. A huge oh, please. moment here. Sorry, right. Don't damage your hand. Mm. He's not wanting the king to Griffey hurt himself. Mm -hmm. Does have the gloves. And look like makeshift mittens. That is opponents. Oh, oh man. man. No. That the dreaded X. And now Danger Zone feeling like they have all the momentum because Danger Zone will get to choose any category on that wheel to stick it to King Arthur. And the Sovereign Nation will be forced to answer five questions from said genre. You know, the first time you guys spun it, it was Spinner's Choice. I'm sure of it. Uh, so every competitor mm, here and one manager at the wheel. Mm -hmm. And this is a really interesting moment of do you I pick your strength or do you try to give them what you category. think they're weak but against or weak in, yeah. which is very right. difficult yeah. to decide with or like, competitors this good. And when you get to this level, you know that they know, know that at least right. a fair right. amount about yeah, every one of those All right. So you want to try that? Let's go, yeah. We're going to give them the Hepburns. The Hepburns. I wonder, did Danger Zone put that on the wheel? Was that just up to chance, or is that a King Arthur slice? All right, so Hepburns is going to be the category for King Arthur, not by their choosing or by their spin. That was Danger Zone giving them that as they spun opponent's choice. So All right, here we go. Round. Five questions coming your way. King Arthur in the category of the Hepburns. Obviously, Audrey and Catherine are in play here. Ten points available. You can check down to multiple choice, and you can confer with one another. You have two repeats remaining. Here we go. Which film earned Katherine Hepburn her first Oscar win for Best Actress in a Leading Role? Multiple 
Do multiple choice, please. All right. Oh, no! Offer that. Is it A, Alice Adams, B, Woman of the Year, C, Morning Glory, or D, The Philadelphia Story? Are we going to say Philadelphia Story? Final answer, please. That is incorrect. <laughs> and now for the one-point steal, we go over to Danger Zone. The question is, which film earned Katherine Hepburn her first Oscar win for Best Actress in a Leading Role? Is it A, Alice Adams, B, Woman of the Year, C, Morning Glory, or D, The Philadelphia Story? Morning Glory. You want to say it? We're going to say C, Morning Glory, final answer. A one-point steal oh, big, to start big the robbery. round for King Arthur. Nice work, Con. Good job. Good job helping out Griffey. That great is job a theft, and that, that's a warning to Danger Zone. All right, oh. we got to let them answer the questions. We're going to stop the intimidation tactics now that we're into round two. Andrew, question two. <laughs> question number two. What Rambo series actor plays con artist Mike Talman alongside Audrey Hepburn in Wait Until Dark? Richard Crenna, final answer. That is correct for two points. King Arthur back in the lead. Big, big pull there by Khan because you don't want to give away another steal opportunity to Danger Zone. And now question three with King Arthur in the lead. Question number three, category of the Hepburns. Audrey Hepburn stars in what 1976 film that was based on the Robin Hood legend? Robin and Marion, final answer. Another two points going over to King Arthur, 24. Congratulations, 21. guys. Nice work. Good job. Question number three. Question number four, excuse me. Which James Bond actor made his film debut in 1968's The Lion in Winter? Uh, Timothy Dalton, final answer. Another two-point grab wow. there. King Arthur doing phenomenally well considering they did spin opponent's choice. This nation is earning its sovereign right. I'm going to say phenomenally well. And your final question, the category of the Hepburns. Audrey Hepburn co-stars with Peter O'Toole and Eli Wallach in what 1960s caper film? How to Steal a Million. Final answer. Another two points go to King Arthur. Now a little bit of a rocky start there in the beginning, Ellis, but this was opponent's choice, and they do fantastic. Yeah, you give away a steal right off the bat, and you start to lose a little bit of confidence, unless apparently you're King Arthur, because they ran the table from there, and now they find themselves up 7, 28 to 21, but now Danger Zone and their antics and their manager will step up to the wheel to give it a tug. All right. Ellis, oh, nice can I congratulate them on a nice round? Can I do that? I thought it was very nice when you clapped as they got a correct answer. It was in earnest. I meant it. I I, I don't necessarily believe all of that, you but spin? you, want me to you spin? go for it. Yeah, I'll spin from this side. Now Danger Zone will spin as they get in their various positions. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> that was just a, uh, just a positively yeah. villainous line read there by Dan Murrow. Shocking turn here Such for a all nice guy for so fans. long. It is almost a wild card, and it lands on another classic category, Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, we know Merle is very strong in this category. Uh -huh. Dan, I'm sure, has done some studying, but it's up to you. they could take a massive lead here in round two. Yeah. That's right. We're going to take it. They are going to keep it. We go into the world of Alfred Hitchcock. To everybody out there, good evening. And now five questions for Danger Zone. Like this first one, worth two points. King Arthur, be ready for a steal. In which Hitchcock film will you hear the line? We have 12 vacancies. 12 cabins, 12 vacancies. Psycho, yes. Psycho, yeah. Psycho final answer. That is correct for two points. Woo! And Danger Zone is on the board. Hey, Con, Here in round me. two yeah, on a question you. that they answered. They actually yes. got on the board thanks to a steal from King Arthur. And now we move to their second question in the world of Hitchcock and Hitchcockian mythology for two points. Which film marked the third collaboration between James Stewart and Alfred Hitchcock? Yeah. 
Five. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Three. Okay. Two. Rear window, final answer. Rear window is incorrect. <laughs> and so now we go to King Arthur. I will repeat the question. Which film marked the third collaboration between James Stewart and Alfred Hitchcock? Uh, we're <clears throat> my man team. who knew too much. Final answer. And King Arthur getting a steal of their <laughs> own wow. off of David. So this one works <laughs> two points as downtown Green Phoenix raises as well. That, that no? huge okay. steal there, Ellis. It, it, talk about that nice swing. Guy. It's a big steal, but still plenty of room left for Danger Zone to make up some ground here. They trail by seven, but we head into their third question in the world of Alfred Hitchcock films. And their next one. What 1970s Alfred Hitchcock film marked the filmmaker's last before his death? Family plot. Mm -hmm. Family plot. Final answer. And Danger Zone gets back on the answering train with that one. 30 to 25. Two questions remain. They trail by five. They can cut the lead to one point, possibly heading into round three if they hit these last two. Such as your penultimate question. Which Casablanca actress starred in the Hitchcock films Spellbound, Notorious, and Under Capricorn? Yep. That would be Ingrid Bergman, final answer. That is correct for two points. Yes! It's a three-point ball game, and this is the match we expected. Yep. Maybe not all the other Tom Foley, but as far as gameplay, 30 to 27, still in favor of King Arthur. One question remains in the category of Alfred Hitchcock for Danger Zone. Here it is. In which Hitchcock film is an innocent man named Christopher Emmanuel Balistrero arrested after being mistaken for an armed robber? The wrong man, final answer. That's the right answer, and that is correct Woo! for 29 total points for Danger Zone, bested only by one. 30 for King Arthur as we head in to round number three. This is the round that will determine the match and we'll figure out which team is going to be advancing to face Shazam for a team's title match. In round number three, each team has 10 total points available to them in the form of three questions that gain in difficulty as they do point value. Your first question is worth two points. Next one, three points. Your final question is worth five big points. And we start with King Arthur. They have a lead by one, so they have the luxury of giving us their three lucky numbers first. From one to 20, what three numerals feel fortunate? Uh, we're gonna pay tribute to one of our favorite actors, someone very dear to our heart, Lucas Black, uh, 11, two, and nine. Okay. It's his birthday. Yeah, pay I was respect. gonna say, what is the significance? Don't understand Look it up. Look it up. Number 29, pay respect. Do you know that I once missed a Lucas Black question? That's oh, so did you? I did. Yeah, he did. It was actually when he played me. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I don't watch your matches. I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't play each other. Okay. Yeah. Wow, what crazy so nice. coincidence there. Really nice. uh, let's get the numbers from Dave. Uh, we'll start with three. Okay. 14. And seven. 3, 14, and 7, all eligible and now taken by Danger Zone. And so the questioning will start with the zone. And it's going to be them choosing which teammate is going to field the two-pointer. We're going to give you the category. Then you'll have to select who's going to field that query solo. You may not rely on the strength of your teammate to answer the two-point question. The opposite teammate will then have to answer the three-pointer. The teams may only collaborate amongst themselves for the five-point question. Andrew, they selected number three. So what are they looking at? They sure did. Danger Zone number three is going to take you over to the category of Marvel films. Mm -hmm. Marvel films. So between the two of you individual competitors that will remain nameless, who would like to answer this question? Yeah. Okay. I'll take it. All right. Looks like it's going to be the one in the sunglasses. Oh, wait. Uh -oh. Here we go. <laughs> ben Bateman rich. for two points in the category of Marvel films. What is the title of the third film in the Blade franchise, which also features Ryan Reynolds and Jessica Biel? Blade Trinity. That is correct for two Woo! points. Danger Zone back in the lead if you send it back over to Khan and Griffey Nooms. That's right. They honored one of their favorite actors with their numbers, and they chose 11. Ellis, if I get another warning, can I pick up a point, maybe? You get, no. You we can take one away or yeah. disqualify you. Yeah. They, okay. Okay. Well, okay. that's no, how warnings right. work, you, right? You are right. You are right. Yeah. We'll just, we're having a nice congenial match. <laughs> Everything is fine as we go to King Arthur and their two-point category coming-of-age films between downtown Griffey Nooms and King Khan. Who would like to take it? I'll 
I'll take it, please. All right, downtown Griffey Nooms is going to field this one to regain the lead over Danger Zone by a point. In the category of coming-of-age movies, who plays Jim's dad in 1999's American Pie? Uh, fun fact, the character is only ever named Jim's dad throughout all the films, but it is Eugene Levy. It is a fun fact, That's and uh, it's also a correct answer, more importantly. There you go. There we and go. 32 so now, to 31. King Arthur yeah. back on top. Danger Zone, you have all three of your repeats, which means you can use all of them if you'd like here. Merle, on your three-point question, you selected number 14, which is going to take you over to the category of mysteries and thrillers. Okay. For your three-point question, Michael Mann directed what 1986 thriller based on a novel by Thomas Harris that featured Brian Cox as Dr. Hannibal Lecter and William Peterson as Will Graham. Manhunter. That is correct for Woo! three points. Danger Zone up 34 to 32. And now comes those heavy hitters. <laughs> All right, so we go back to King Arthur. They can take that one-point lead back again if King Khan can hit this three-pointer. It is in the category of your number two, which corresponds to really winding back the clock here in this match. 1950s movies. Mm -hmm. 1950s films. And here is your question. In the 1955 musical Guys and Dolls, which famed singer plays Nathan Detroit alongside Marlon Brando's Sky Masterson? I would say Frank Sinatra. Old Blue Eyes is correct for three points, and King Arthur hits a big one. Their knowledge belies their youth. And now it all comes down to this potentially for Danger Zone. A five-point question faces them. Here's the good news. They can confer with each other for this one, and we know how well their strengths complement one another. But if they miss it, it will be King Arthur advancing to face Shazam in the in the team's title match. Yeah, a rematch there that you know that they want. And of yes, course, Danger do. Zone wants to get to the top of that mountain. Here we go. We were just in the 1950s. Let's go up a decade to the 1960s for your five-point question and to send it back over, staying alive in this number one contenders match. For five points in the 1960s, you have all three of your repeats available. Benny Hill co-stars with Michael Caine in what 1960s heist comedy film? Alfie. Still all three of the repeats. It's so crucial to have time to get that five point. This is such a tough question. When you go back this far, 60 years. Five, four, three. Two. Repeat, Repeat the question. question. That's their first. They have two remaining. 1960s for five points. Benny Hill co-stars with Michael Caine in what 1960s heist comedy film? You know, a lot of younger viewers might only know Michael Caine from a handful of movies, maybe the Dark Knight franchise, but he's been working for, uh, you know, six, seven decades. Old guy. Experience. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's, a, that's a good way to put it. Five. Four. Three. One repeat left. Two, two repeats. Two. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. That's your second repeat. You still have one remaining. 1960s, five points. Benny Hill co-stars with Michael Caine in what 1960s heist comedy film? I don't think it is. That's the same thing. I don't think it's part of it. One point ball game. One repeat left. It all comes down to this. And you can see dangerous. that Danger Zone is really working line. through their like beast. The They're not baiting us like right now. They're not jobbing us. Uh, Four, figuring out the answer. Three. We use our last repeat. Two. That's their last one. Last repeat. 1960s. Five points. Benny Hill co-stars with Michael Caine in what 1960s heist comedy film? Get down to it. It's not necessarily about who loves them or who hates them. It's about how great they are at movie trivia. Can they pull out yet another five-pointer in their illustrious careers? These two can definitely do it. Five. We're gonna go with Alfie. Final answer. And you're Italian job. The Italian job released in 19. 
is 69, I believe. It was a remake, the Mark Wahlberg one that I believe has Michael Caine in it. We'll do some research on that. We don't know a lot about movies up here. We just asked the questions, and boy, did we get a lot of correct answers from both squads today. Say what you want about the squabbling and the bickering and the backstabbing. King Arthur and Danger Zone came here to play. They were both on a mission to meet Shazam. Only one could emerge victorious, and today it is King Arthur. Yeah, personal vendettas aside, you have to credit Danger Zone for coming out, playing a great match, tied Absolutely. up, leaving round one, down by one, going into round number three. But it was King Arthur who stayed the course. They did the marathon, not the sprint. They never got ahead of themselves. They never even got in their opponents' heads. They just played the game that they love, and they come out on top by just a hair. And that's how dangerous that five-point question is, Ellis. And they are one step closer to that championship belt. They'll be facing Shazam, and if they win it, I think maybe everyone around the world might have to get down on one knee when King Arthur enters a room because they're just that good. And so now for an exclusive post-match interview with first, the sovereign nation of King Arthur downtown, Griffey Nooms and King Khan. We turn it over to Jen Sturger. Jen, I imagine their manager has got to be, uh, maybe we just talk to the team. Well, we knew tonight was going to be a heavyweight fight, but I, I still feel like there were people out there that were doubting King Arthur. Do you feel like today was a statement win for you two? I, I think a, a, a king has no need to impress. Uh, you know, if people were surprised by this win, I think it is only because some people choose to partake in uh, pomp and circumstance to talk up a big game to create a sense of intimidation. But uh, I feel in uh, all of those instances, it is eventually proven that the emperor has no clothes. Whereas uh, my king here is <laughs> fully dressed. Walk me through that round two, and obviously the pivotal game, like the part of this game was that big steal, right? I mean, look, people can look at me, look at how young I am, and think I don't know older movies. But then I swept 70s against Lon, and I just stole a Hitchcock question, and I got a 50s three-pointer. Yeah, you can, you can stop with all this, I'm too young for the showdown talk. You, you make an absolutely great point, as actually in my notes to ask you about, because a lot of the older folks backstage were holding their breath when you got that and just the, uh, the entire room erupted when you pulled that answer. Look, if I can just say, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, they anoint a, a new Dalai Lama sometimes at the age of six, seven, no one questions his wisdom. <laughs> We're in the face of royalty here, okay? He is king for a reason. It's not birthright, I mean, he, he conquered to get that. Exactly, crown. yes. Conquered many a Burger Kings from the looks of it. Yes. So I guess the next hurdle that you guys have to face is gonna be Shazam, but, um, I have to point out the obvious. Uh, where's Gucci right now? Look, let's be honest here. Uh, a king has no manager. At best, Gucci functioned as a royal advisor. And Jester. A royal advisor. And uh, we were willing to extend the performative title of manager to comply by the rules of this great nation of the Schmodown. Uh, but uh, disrespect was paid today. Uh, greater than the disrespect of no one taking the knee, which, by the way, we did keep track of everyone here who stayed seated mm -hmm. the entire time. I was totally kneeling, but, but never mind. Appreciate it and noted. Yep. Uh, you will be spared. But uh, we, we, we are fine. We are, as we said, a, a sovereign nation, independent nation, and uh, the king will continue to reign. Wait, so you're leaving Gucci? You're done with Gucci, the Finstock Exchange, all of it? I mean, I would take the shirt off right now, but that would feel more like a Gucci move anyway. So <laughs> I'm keeping it on, but yes, we are done. Wow, uh, that's a big announcement, especially ahead of your match against Shazam. So how are you guys going to prepare for that match going forward, seeing as you're kind of on your own, you're going rogue now? Um, our strategy against Shazam is to win. Yes. To not do what we didn't do last time. I feel like that's a solid start, guys. Anyways, congratulations oh. on a fantastic victory today. I wasn't trying to shake hands, but okay, Just whatever. Just a little, you might a curtsy or something. Like. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, back to the desk. <laughs> Well, you know, we kind of thought the Sovereign Nation thing was just a funny thing <laughs> said by a funny guy downtown yeah. Griffey Nooms. It appears King Arthur is now a Sovereign Nation away from the Finstock Exchange and Gucci no longer their manager. This is breaking news. Yeah, this is one of those things where you fall asleep on the job and you get fired. You know, King Arthur, <laughs> one of the best teams in the entire Schmodown. You just saw what they did to Danger Zone there. Now, without a manager going up against 
arguably the greatest team in Schmodown history. Now, I know the Patriots have something to say about that, but going into their rematch against Shazam without a manager, it could be a ballsy move, but they played great today, Ellis. And given their manager, sometimes will he, won't he even show up to his job? Maybe it's a blessing in disguise because, like you intimated, big rematch afoot next week. And so there's going to be a lot of fireworks as we get deeper and deeper into this drama. What really went on behind the scenes? That's for all of our great after shows to discuss. Right now, we are going to turn it back over to Jen Sturger, who's going to be talking with Danger Zone. What do you expect here? You know, Danger Zone, love them, hate them. Uh, they're a great team with two incredible players. However, they just haven't been able to find the rhythm that all of us know that they should be able to find, whether it was last season against Press Room, getting knocked out of the tournament, or right now coming back with that number one contenders match, which they stole, I guess, from John Kaiser. Here's the worst piece of information for all of us, Ellis. They have another number one contenders match that can be given up anywhere, whether they want to do it again in teams or whether Dan wants to take it in singles or show up in inner geekdom. Who knows? He does have that from being the MVP of our free-for-all. And I have a feeling Jen Sturge is going to ask them about that and a whole lot more right now. Jen, we wish you well. Quite the heartbreaker out there today for Danger Zone. I mean... You guys are two of the most dominant players in the game. What is going on out there that we just can't close the deal? Well, actually, before we start, uh, I have something I want to say because as everybody knows, I have a number one contender shot that I just won. And I, I don't, King Arthur didn't go anywhere because uh, right here, right now, I want to tell them that I may use that shot against them in the very <laughs> near future. So they should just look out because <laughs> They're lucky I decided not to use it today. <laughs> cool. Th thank you so much for that groundbreaking news. I'm so thrilled that you decided to share that with me. Anytime. So what was it, guys? You know, was it the two-point steal that kind of knocked you guys off your game? Was it the five-pointer? Like, that was such an incredible match, except for those two points. You know, those two, those two questions. When you go against players that you really believe in your heart are dumber and less than you, uh, when you really believe it in your core, sometimes you just get a little ahead of yourself. Mm. And uh, I was just looking over at him, and I was just thinking about re really how stupid and pathetic I think those guys are. And I just was like, you know what? We're just going to roll with this question. We're going to roll with this answer. I felt like it was the right thing. I, I guess we should have double-checked our work together, but when you get wrapped up with so much hate in your heart, it's, uh, it's sometimes it's hard to, <laughs> you know, move past it. I'm, I'm going to be filing a formal complaint with the league. I, I really don't feel it was appropriate for us to be lectured by Andrew Guy, of all people, of all on people. our behavior at the table. I'm sorry we weren't Mr. Prem and Proper over here while we were doing this match. Uh, so, you know, whatever. And I, you know what, I'm actually kind of glad we lost because it just gives people even more reason to complain about us being around. Wah, wah, the wah, more wah. we lose, the more everyone is gonna hate the fact that we just won't go away. <laughs> we missed one more question. Ooh, they suck. They're terrible. We missed one more question than the other people do. And you know what? I'm actually glad we did because that just makes everyone else's life out there who doesn't have a life, who's made their life hating Danger Zone, that much more miserable because we're not going away. Every time we lose, they're like, well, that's it for Danger Zone. They're done. They're going away. We're not going anywhere. Yeah, you, we're not you, going anywhere. I read the comments, okay, guys? I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, I never read Reddit. I don't look at the comments. You know what I do? I read the comments, and I see how much you guys hate us, and it just fuels the fire in my loins to come back here, <laughs> to come back here and give you all what you really want, which is to hate the winner, which is what we're going to be. When the season's over, Danger Zone's gonna be the champion. And there's nothing you, you, anyone can do to stop it. All right? Sorry, guys. You're gonna see us soon. <laughs> I bathe in them. I print them out and I bathe in them. Oh, and I'd like to point out, by the way, I did what I wanted today. I got yet another warning. So, uh, you know, the boss comes to play. A win is a win, I guess. Uh, Kate, you seem really, dare I say, happy? Like despite today's outcome like what what am i missing here i'm sorry i'm gonna go ahead and take that thank you um this is what i'll say uh am i worried about us losing one match no no <laughs> Not at all. i feel really good 
The other thing is none of you deserve this. None of you deserve this. But we've got a little secret that we're going to give out today. So um, I believe it was in the, in the early 90s, um, a poet said, I toss them and leave them. I pull up quick to retrieve them. And that's what I've done, okay? It was a knight, Sir Mix-a-Lot, okay? That's what I've been doing with Kaiser's people, okay? Real because world. Kaiser is an idiot. And he let one of the greatest players to ever play the game go. And I pulled up quick to retrieve it. Come on out, Robert Parker. We're taking oh. the spider. Oh. Woo! Oh. <laughs> Oh my, uh, Robert, w what's going on here? Look, Kaiser dropped me without a second thought, and I'm just here to show him how much of an imbecile he is for doing that. It's about winning this year, it's about being the best, it's about dominating, and that's what all of us plan to do. Wow, uh, big news back here, uh, backstage guys. Um, yeah. It's a lot of goats. <laughs> Let's see. I think, I think he's discomfort. on a championship path. I think he's on a championship path. I think I've got a championship path in my back pocket. So I think that everybody who's out there talking crap about this faction can maybe just shut up and enjoy the show. <laughs> That's an option. Check back in a few weeks, guys. That's my cue to end this. Uh, back to the desk. Wow, okay, so we knew we were going to hear possibly about the number one contender match and where that's going to go. We yeah. did not know that Robert Parker, the spider, was just going to make his triumphant return. He is now managed by Kate Mulligan. Robert Parker looks angry, and he's joined the correct faction to do that with the <laughs> Den now with Parker, <laughs> Merle, and Bateman, uh, three big heavy hitters in divisions all the way across the league, all angry, all looking to prove something. And Kate, you know, it's an exciting thing to have that many passionate players, but it's also really tough to wrangle that amount yep. of personalities for one manager. She's taken on a lot. Is it more than she can bite off? Bite it's, off more than she can chew. There it is. There it is. We, we, we got there eventually, and Parker found his way to the den. That's and right. uh, th this is going to be a very interesting matchup because a lot of people have been wondering where the, sp where, where the spider is, who's he going to be playing first, and so now we get to see the spider in action next week, and that is just the broad strokes because we're also going to have a belt on the line. Friday night, Titans, what more do you want? Did you get your money's worth today, folks? I know Andrew and I did because our delightful PA, Josh, with some help from TL, got us beverages, and that's why we did such a great job steering the ship. We love you, Josh. And the great, how about everybody watching tonight as we say goodnight here on Friday Night Titans? How about everybody at home? Just give a big round of applause to our crew here. God, they work hard. There you know, is. you sitting on the couch, if you're at the gym, are you on the John right now watching this? Give a big round of applause to our incredibly hardworking crew here at Skybound in the Schmodown Studios. That is Andrew Guy. I am Mark Ellis. Your winners tonight facing Shazam in a team's title match will be King Arthur, now a sovereign nation. Thanks for tuning into the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. We'll see you next time right here at Friday Night Tight. <laughs> Welcome to the dead. Could it be happier about this? Oh, I just know you're going to fulfill those promises that you made oh, to me. 100%. No question about it. Hey. Wow. Prodigal son returns. I was never your son, all right? Don't call me that. Don't call me your brother. Don't call me your friend, all right? You dropped me the second his theme music played at Spectacular. Not even a phone call, not even a text. So don't pretend to be stand here and be all buddy-buddy, because that's not what this is. Listen, man, I don't know what she's saying to you, but after everything he did for you, after everything I did for you when I was away, after we, we were here, man, we were family, we were brothers. You say not to call them brothers? How can you say that, man? And you're going to let this den of thieves get into your head? They're corrupting your mind, brother. No, all I heard about for the last two years was how I'm the next Kevin Smets. I'm the next Kevin Smets. No, I'm my own competitor. I'm my own player, and I deserve that respect. I have, while you were away, I was out there breaking records. I was there, out there winning matches. I was out there playing for titles. And everybody threw me to the side the second you stepped foot again. So rest easy, because that belt's coming to me. Oh, yeah? That's how we're going now? That's, That's how, how this going. is? Yeah. yeah. Well, just bring it. You know what, Parker? You're breaking my heart. Kaiser, I got some advice for you. Stop eating salami. Ah. Can you really smell it that bad? 
Yeah, kind of. You feel bad? You're yeah. back. I Feels mean, do better. I? I don't know. Do I take the shirt off and throw it in the trash? Or well, look, you, I just made the emperor's in clothes thing, so you don't want to be seen out in public naked. Yeah. But gentlemen, I will get the finest Egyptian. Gentlemen, gentlemen first up, yeah. congratulations! Fantastic match. Thank you. Thank you. Look, I know Gucci wasn't here. There's a very good reason. He's out doing a mission for the betterment of the exchange. If you could please just reconsider and stick around. There was a grave disrespect paid to the court today. It's yeah, under, and understandable. Title, and you have to also understand that we just told Jen Sturger that we're going solo. So if we don't stick to that, we either look like liars or like there was some forced last second rewrite. Or do you understand the position you're putting us in? Yeah, but, but since when has lying been a problem in the Finstock Exchange? It's kind of our brand. So what do you need us to do? Look, first off, I want you to stay. Second off, more importantly, so Gucci's mission is going to keep him out for my upcoming match against Brandon the Hornet. And I really need a replacement manager. So if maybe one of you can come. You, you, want, you want us to remain in allegiance to someone who snubbed his nose at the king and then also want to put us to work in the field? I mean, I wouldn't call it a field. It would be a great honor That's to a have. a metaphorical field. To have the, what I'm saying. A great honor to have the king. I appreciate the bow. For all that respect. we've been through, I will do this just for you, just this once. Hold on, hold on, make him work for it. Take a, take a knee, what about you? The king appreciates it. Okay. Elvis wants to take a knee. Thank you. Elvis is a loyal subject. But yes, because of all we've been through, I will do this for you once. We appreciate it. Thank you. 